Stevens with eatbeautiful.net. Thank you, somebody there. there. Um, Helen says, how do you know what your stomach pH is? Is there a natural alternative? Yes, these are great questions. Um, so we'll talk about those. Now, as far as like actually measuring the exact stomach pH, it really isn't necessary. The bigger question is, what does your overall health look like? How are you digesting food? Looking at the big picture, you can tell. And you know, most people as they age are gonna need some kind of aid in this arena, and we'll talk about other aids as well. Um, and we're definitely gonna be talking about natural options, absolutely. So let's jump into betaine HCL with pepsin first, and we're gonna be talking about its benefits and then the drawbacks that go along with it. And then we're gonna talk about digestive bitters, the benefits, the drawbacks, and then I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about some alternatives, some additional alternatives. The best reason to be using betaine HCL is it is the big guns. It is the biggest, most powerful supplement for the pH of the stomach that you can access. So if you are seriously unwell, or if you're on a budget because it's very affordable, betaine HCL is the first and most important supplement. Now, it doesn't mean that you can just jump in blindly. We're gonna talk about in a minute here some cautionary words about using betaine HCL. But let me talk to you for just a minute about um, some of the chronic and common digestion issues that betaine HCL can address. And some of them are really obvious. Indigestion, gas, bloating, acid reflux, constipation, I've mentioned some of these already, diarrhea, malabsorption, nutrient deficiencies, acne, skin issues including rosacea, gallstones, stomach ulcer, and we'll come back to that one because we need to be a little careful with ulcers, chronic hives, food sensitivities, thyroid function, inner ear infections, iron deficiency or anemia, helps to balance gut flora, and helps with calcium absorption. And there's a whole huge host of things it helps, and that's because if the stomach pH is correct, everything else is going to function better, and eventually, ideally, correctly. Um, so it sets the pH of the stomach right, thus setting all the other digestive mechanisms doing what they're supposed to do. Um, one of the things that it does is I, I mentioned it shuts the sphincter leading up to the esophagus. It also shuts a valve called the ileocecal valve between the small intestine and the large intestine, which it prevents flora from traveling up into the small intestine. Um, the small intestine is supposed to be an area that's very has a low population of gut flora, like 10,000. Um, and so keeping that ileocecal valve shut is one of the great things that HCL does. It also, because of how acidic it is, it helps to kill pathogens right away from, from the moment it goes down your throat and, and the capsule dissolves in your stomach right then and there, it starts to kill pathogens. Um, and ordinarily in a healthy person, um, that's what the stomach pH should be. It should be so acidic that certain pathogens are being killed all the time in the stomach. So it's starting right then and there to kill off pathogens and then that acidity continues on down. Um, okay, a couple little side notes on this. You wanna make sure that you get HCL with pepsin. So there are HCLs out there, um, which by the way stands for hydrochloric acid. Um, there are those out there without pepsin. Pepsin actually helps to break down protein, like the actual protein you eat, a hot dog, like I had this morning for breakfast. So you want the pepsin, you need the pepsin. Um, it is not necessary to take betaine HCL with pepsin if you're having a small snack that does not have any protein in it. So, you know, some watermelon or some carrot sticks or something, don't take it. But otherwise, with all of your main meals, especially those with protein, which all our main meals should have, then you wanna take it. Um, now, a lot of people ask me about um, dosage, and it's gonna vary person to person. This is quite a quirky aspect of betaine HCL. Um, 550 milligrams is usually the minimum amount for an adult. Some people can take all the way up to 5,000 milligrams, and what you're shooting for is the ultimate effectiveness, and it's gonna be different in different people's bodies. My body can only tolerate about 750 to 900 milligrams because my gut lining is, you know, I'm mostly well, but what's that mean for me, subjective to my health, it's been a long journey. My gut lining is still, it's still fragile. So I still have to be more careful, but you can have a pretty significant health issue and actually need a lot more HCL to get the benefit. And what you're doing is you're kind of, um, you don't need to do that forever. You work up to, um, however many pills you can tolerate, which we'll talk about how you figure that out. Um, and then you can stay there for a few months and then you work back down to a smaller dosage. 
how do you figure out how much um, after you take an HCL, which you take it with or after a meal, not before, but right in the middle of a meal. You can take it directly before, but not like 15 minutes before because you don't want it to start digesting your actual stomach lining. So take it in the middle of your meal or right before your first bite or right after. Um, and then if you increase your dosage, you do not want to have burning in your belly. You do not want to have any kind of acid reflux. If you have those symptoms, especially the burning in the belly, then you back off by one pill. Most pills vary from anywhere from 550 to 650 milligrams per capsule. There might be some brands that are slightly more, but that's the average. So you can work up to six capsules per meal. It just gets a little pricey. One capsule per meal is extremely affordable. So if you're looking for your right dosage, that is how you establish it. Um, so just by way of review and also to add a couple more things there, um, HCL breaks down fats. It helps to assimilate nutrients, like we said. If you're eating a nutritious diet, you may not be getting as much of it as you think you are. So digestion means actually assimilating the nutrients. Um, so when the food is broken down properly by the proper pH in the stomach, then you're gonna be getting more of the good food you're eating. It also helps to detoxify and cleanse the body. Okay, let's look at some drawbacks. Someone mentioned a hernia a minute ago. If you have certain issues like that, um, like ulcers, um, any kind of inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's, colitis, um, you need to be much more careful. And um, there are ways to start more slowly where you actually should heal your gut lining first. So cabbage juice is an option. Um, there's a supplement called um, gastrozyme, which is made from cabbage. Um, but basically you wanna start more slowly. And also you could start with digestive bitters, which we'll talk about in a minute. But even bitters, you need to be careful with those kinds of conditions. Also folks who are on anti-inflammatory medications like Advil or prednisone or aspirin, um, any anti-inflammatory medications, one of the main reasons we try to stay away from Advil, like my daughter, when she was struggling with migraines, she used to say, mom, can't I have Advil? It's like, no, let's come up with some natural alternatives because what does Advil do? What do those anti-inflammatories do? They break down the lining of the stomach. They cause a greater leaky gut. And that's the very thing we're trying to heal. So if you're already on an anti-inflammatory um, medication, you probably don't wanna do HCL as well because it may very well just weaken the stomach lining more. If it's already very susceptible, um, very vulnerable, then you wanna be careful that the HCL doesn't make it worse. Um, Okay, I mentioned to you that I'm learning as I'm going and that one of, so what, the main thing that I learned recently that I didn't realize um, because I had read so much about hydrochloric acid being made in, that it's not natural, that it's being made in laboratory, is that it is derived from vegetable sources and that one of the main vegetable sources it's derived from is um, sugar beets. And what is sugar beets? make you what little like red lights go off in your head and light bulbs go off in your head when you hear the words sugar beets for me immediately i think genetically modified gmos well sure enough um i had this hcl brand that i've liked for some time that i've been taking that's a great price that worked well for my family well it is not um GMO free and as I did some research I found that there are very few out there that are GMO free and going hand in hand with this issue is pepsin. Pepsin is derived from pork and if you look at our pork industry it's terrible in America. It's one of the worst animal husbandry um, models going and um, so I found a couple products that I love that are organic and non-GMO and um, you know either way HCL is not an expensive supplement if you have to work up to taking six at each, at each meal it does get a little pricey but hopefully you can have that just last for a couple months and then scale back down again so um, I have a couple to mention to you one is um, by designs for health that one is um, just straight HCL with pepsin um, and I'm so excited. They always create great supplements. I love Designs for Health. So they have a GMO-free, wonderful um, betting HCL with pepsin. You can go to eatbeautiful.net forward slash resources and scroll down to supplements and I have the link there. And then there's also this one that's a newer one in my world that I'm really excited about. It actually combines betaine HCL with pepsin with gentian, which is a digestive bitter that we're gonna talk about in a minute. So for the only two um, supplements in this arena 
that aren't just straight digestive bitters, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, these are the two products I recommend going to. So eatbeautiful.net forward slash resources. Go down to supplements and then they're underneath there. And there are also some links to the digestive bitters I'm going to talk about. I'm just so thankful that there are a couple brands we can turn to and also shocked that there aren't more. And for someone like me who cares about this, I don't know why I didn't clue into it sooner, but I'm thankful I finally realized that. So I actually need to go back through some of my former written um, posts where I have links and make sure they're all to the non-GMO brands. Um, all right, so let's see, just making sure I've covered um, all of the issues here. Um, so as far as the drawbacks of betaine HCL, I've mentioned a few of those. The last one I want to mention, which is a perfect lead-in into digestive bitters and why I like it so much, is that betaine HCL um, is not so much stimulating your gallbladder to release bile as much as doing the job for your body. It's just putting the acid into your stomach. Now it's putting a lot of acid in and it's doing it right and so there's a lot of good things that are happening and for people that are unwell it really still is a good choice but at the end of the day it's true we really want to teach our bodies or re teach our bodies, remind them how to do what they're supposed to do, which is that the liver produces bile, it stores it in the gallbladder, and then the gallbladder releases it. So the main benefit of digestive bitters is that that's exactly what they do. They are food derived, they are tracing back to the ancestry of eating bitter foods, and they are stimulating our gallbladder to release the bile into our stomach. So. Woohoo! Yay for digestive bitters. I am all about, you know, the diversity of what we eat and I love the idea of eating bitter foods and teaching our children to slowly. I get it. I mean, it's not overnight. My kids don't like organ meats. My kids don't all love arugula. Um, but you get the idea. As adults, as we grow up, I think that we should mature our palates because we are supposed to have a broad array of foods that we eat and that we like, and we're not supposed to just cling to sweet or sweet and salty. Um, and so one of the really cool things about digestive bitters is they teach us to like the bitter taste again. And in so doing, they also help to quell our sugar cravings. Um, so let me go ahead and, and talk about some of the benefits of digestive bitters. Digestive bitters stimulate saliva to be produced, which is the first step in digestion. Yes, someone asks, is there a specific time of day when you should eat these or take the supplements? You bet, and I'm going to circle right back to that. Thank you for asking that. Um, so digestive bitters um, stimulate saliva to be produced, which is the first step in digestion. It really is like, you know, that that domino effect of one digestive mechanism after the next being affected by these. Um, so then pepsin is naturally produced and released in the stomach as well as other digestive enzymes. Um, therefore, the absorption of nutrients is increased. This prevents gas, bloating, heartburn, same things that HCL prevents. Um, one thing that makes bitters very unique and different than betaine HCL and better is that it's very good at relieving nausea um, because it releases helps release the bile um, or stimulates the gallbladder to release bile it actually helps to break down fats and um, so you know there's a, a million different stories out there and I've experienced it myself if you eat a meal that's too high in fat you can actually take um, digestive bitters even after a meal, and we'll talk about what's ideal, but you can take it after a meal and it will relieve your nausea because it's helping to break down the fats. And breaking down the fats, what does that mean? It means your body's actually then able to absorb the fats and use the nutrition from the fats. So it's not just how you feel, like, oh, I feel better now. It helps to digest the fats. What does that mean? It means your body's now using the fats, utilizing the nutrition in the fat. Um, it supports liver function, proper bowel movements, healthy skin. Like I said, it helps to reduce sugar cravings and balance, one, balance one's appetite. So even occasionally, if you feel like you have the munchies but you're not hungry, you can actually make yourself a quote cocktail of digestive bitters in an inch or two of water or even in soda water if you want more like of a fun drink. Um, and this will really help to balance the appetite and quell sugar cravings. Um, and you may know that sauerkraut does this too. A big bite of sauerkraut is very good at quelling sugar cravings. Um, bitters also help to cleanse the body. They're high in minerals. One of my favorite things about bitters is they actually, the flavor in the mouth actually helps to stimulate the lungs and bitters actually open the lungs. So for people with asthma, bitters are great. 
And that one hits close to home because I have a daughter who has asthma in remission. And so that's been a big help to us. Um, bitters are great for folks as they age because many of our functions are lessened. Someone says, wow, yes. Many of our functions, digestive functions, are lessened as we age. Um, and we've talked about some of those before, like even in the colon. So um, this is another great one as we get older and we produce fewer gastric juices, adding bitters to our diet is great. And then another favorite um, aspect for me about bitters is it's hard to overdo them because they're food-based. So if you think about eating arugula or other leafy greens that are bitter or other bitter foods like orange peel, um, they're foods, right? So unless you have a food sensitivity, which we're gonna talk about in a minute as far as drawbacks to bitters, unless you have a food sensitivity or you know you're prone to food allergies, Great questions. She says, what if someone has had their gallbladder removed? We're gonna talk about that too. Good, good questions. Um, then, you know, you don't have to worry about doing bitters too often, unless you know you're prone to food allergies, but um, you can do them regularly and they're gonna keep being an aid to your body. Um, it's almost like eating, you know, bitter greens at every meal or regularly. All right, let's talk about the drawbacks of bitters. Um, all of the ingredients may not work well for everyone with food sensitivities. For instance, the best digest digestive bitters are in an alcohol base. So if someone is very sensitive to alcohol, that's not going to be a good option for them. Conversely, someone else might be sensitive to glycerin. I personally can't do glycerin because most of them are fruit based and I don't do well with fruit. Um, so you want to find the base that's right for you, whether it's glycerin or alcohol. Typically alcohol is preferable in my mind, but obviously for those who can't have alcohol, this is not going to be a supplement that works. Great. Go to HCL. Um, and then the other thing is the most digestive bitters on the market are a combination of many different bitters, herbs, vegetables, fruits combined together. Um, for those of you who are like me who cannot have fruit at all, then you cannot have those kinds of digestive bitters. And um, so that is something to watch for. Now I know there aren't scads of people out there who can't have fruit, but the number is growing as more and more folks get um, their food evaluations done. The kind that I talk about on my blog is called the Carol Test. It's a food evaluation that helps you to know what foods your body does not digest well, and it's what allowed me to put my bladder disease into remission and our daughter's asthma into remission. So it's kind of a food intolerance that's hidden. Um, so for those who can't have fruit, traditional bitters aren't going to work for you, but you can make your own or the one I want to talk about right now um, just briefly is gentian and I do have this one on my resources page, eatbeautiful.net forward slash resources, scroll down to supplements and it's like the fourth one on the list. Gentian is great. It is a digestive bitter all by itself and it's fruit free. So I highly recommend this. I love it. And the one I showed you earlier on my iPad, the photo, Doc's Best or Doctor's Best, it's betaine HCL with pepsin plus gentian. So it's a fruit-free supplement with all three. Um, and we're going to talk about in a minute who might want to actually have all three of those. We'll, we'll circle back to that. Now, um, someone asked a great question, which is when are you supposed to be taking um, digestive bitters and also I'll circle back to I mentioned also didn't I about HCL so HCL is with your first bite of food or in the middle of a meal ideally some people would say at the end of the meal um, bitters are actually before a meal and the reason is they are naturally preparing the stomach juices for food so 15 to 20 minutes before a meal um, I like to put an inch or two of water in a glass with a full dropper full of gentian or digestive bitters and drink that down 15 to 20 minutes before you eat. And that will prepare the pH of your stomach naturally. So you'll know during those 15 minutes that your gallbladder is releasing bile into your stomach. Um, so let's see, I think I talked about, um, okay, so we're still talking about the drawbacks of um, bitters for certain people. The next one is people, again, with gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach, ulcers, um, any kind of IBD, any kind of digestive issues that have inflammation like colitis, Crohn's. Um, someone said, this is such good information. I'm going to have to rewatch this with a pen and paper. Thank you. I'm so, so glad. I'm so glad. Um, so people with any kind of stomach inflammation, you are going to want to start bitters with caution or um, alongside a practitioner, a holistic practitioner who can help give you wisdom as to how safe it is for you to start it. So I won't say it's safe for everyone. So start with caution if you have those pre-existing conditions. Um, now, 
Someone asked, what if you've had your gallbladder removed? And this actually comes up often for me with my clients. Lots of folks have, have, their, have had their gallbladders removed. The answer is it is different for different people. Um, ideally, so your liver is still producing um, bile. Whether or not your gallbladder is holding it, your liver is still producing it. But it is going from your liver directly into your large intestine. So um, it is important in our diets to have fat, right? So a lot of people who have their gallbladders out are actually pulling out a lot of the fat in their diet. What I would suggest, and it's kind of like my approach to healing in general, and it's not like a nice, easy answer, but slow and steady, the answer is, in my opinion, slow and steady, you actually want to teach your body to still be able to digest fat. And so you ideally would have a strategic approach. Um, and yes, you would ideally still be taking digestive bitters. Um, so you would do a small amount of fat and bitters and see how it goes and gradually try to increase. Um, watching and listening to your body all the time. There are people who are always going to have to keep a reduced fat intake. Um, I would recommend for those folks eating small amounts of fat but having meals more often so you can in the long run still get more fat into your diet overall. And then worst case scenario, there's HCL which is great. Um, I have someone in my family who has their gall gallbladder out and they take betaine HCL with every meal. And um, I would say folks like that, folks like me, we should be taking Betaine HCL or bitters with every single meal, every single day for the rest of our lives. It's that important. There are people who can get to a state of wellness who can just use these things intermittently if they have a big meal or a high fat meal or extra protein. Um, but for a lot of us who have a history of autoimmune issues or compromised gut flora um, or SIBO, any kind of um, gut digestion issues, this is the main aid and the most important one. Now, of course, like I said, there's the caveat, those who have had ulcers or other major gastric issues, um, diarrhea, you want to be careful. If you can tolerate it, though, this is a great staple. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about who should use both of these supplements in conjunction with one another. Um, first of all, I would say um, the person who doesn't have a gallbladder, first and foremost, because um, you, you still need what the HCL is providing, right? You need the right pH in your stomach to stimulate all the other digestive organs. Yes, you don't have a gallbladder, but all the other organs are still gonna need that stimulating. You're gonna still wanna have that acidic belly to kill pathogens and to shut the sphincter valve that connects to your esophagus. Someone says, if you have no gallbladder and are pregnant, can you use HCL? Um, I would say, check with your practitioner, and I would say most likely yes, um, in a smaller amount, but, but ask your practitioner first, please. Whenever I, um, I'm asked about pregnancy, I always think safest to ask your practitioner, for sure. Um, theoretically, yes. So, um, so first and foremost, if someone has their gallbladder out, yes, keep using the bitters because you wanna teach your body you still want to stimulate the liver. You still want to teach your body to do what it can do, even though it doesn't have the gallbladder anymore. Um, but put that HCL in no matter what. Keep the HCL in your diet. Um, who else should you use both? Someone with SIBO. Because yes, you want to make sure that ileocecal valve is shutting. Yes, you want to teach the gallbladder do, to do what it's supposed to do. Um, and then anybody really who feels like they've been in a chronic space of unwellness, I say use both, especially if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, no big deal. These actually are not super expensive supplements, but obviously we all have budgets and we have to find which supplements we want to use and we don't want to be using more than we need to. Um, but if you can afford to, even if it's intermittent, you don't have to use both at every meal, but to alternate because we really want to be, yeah, reminding our gallbladder how to release the bile and yet we want to make sure that there's enough um, acid in the stomach to do all of the other functions properly as well. So I would say using both is actually something worth considering. Um, and anybody who has issues with constipation, all those things, it would be worth considering using both. I want to say too that I hope you'll actually like um, bitters. If you haven't had them before, I know I already kind of went off about that, but I do think they're delicious. Sometimes um, if I'm really thirsty during the day, um, I'm going to talk just very briefly, I'm at the end, but about a few other digestive aids. Um, one of them is I love to make ginger water, so I just grate fresh ginger into water. Well, if I don't have time to do that, um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll have my glass of water, and this is oh, a big old container, but um, 
we do these fulvic ionic soil minerals um, in order to get proper nutrition. And so if I'm drinking a bunch of water during the day, um, I'll put, like I, I, I fill this little dropper full of the fulvic minerals and I'll put a dropper full or half a dropper full into a glass of water. And then I'll, instead of putting a full dropper full of the gentian or digestive bitters in, because I'm not about to have a meal, I'll just put a few drops of this into my water as well. And that helps my body to assimilate the minerals better. Um, so it can be used creatively as well. And then I feel like it actually quenches my thirst better because my body's able to absorb the water better. So those are some little things to consider. Now, um, Perhaps many of you have heard about using lemon water or apple cider vinegar water. Oh, someone is asking that right now. What about organic AC vinegar? Yes, absolutely. Those are great aids. So um, I've listed here ginger, mint, lemon, apple cider vinegar, fermented foods. These are all wonderful ways to aid stomach digestion. Um, and the point and the sort of the delineation I want to make is that bitters are more powerful um, for doing all the things we talked about. And um, HCL with pepsin are, is even more powerful than that as far as like what I always say, the big guns. HCL are the biggest of the guns. Next down are bitters, but bitters are great because they're so natural. Um, so ACV and lemon juice are great. I think of them more as perfect for someone that's pretty much healthy, strong, doing great. Then that just like sets the pH of their stomach right for the day. Um, so yes, use those. They're perfect. Um, do I recommend alkaline water? You know what? I'm going to save that topic. I am researching that right now. We're looking into that with uh, doing a lot of research on it. And so I will save that topic for another time. It's a good question. Um, and I also want to mention fermented foods. So like in that list of mint, ginger, ACV water, lemon water, fermented foods are another great aid to digestion in general, setting the pH of the tummy right. Someone else says, I want to know that too. Great. And also bone broth. We often forget, but bone broth sets the pH of the stomach right. Now, when I say sets it right, it's not setting it right as well as HCL or bitters, but it, it is helping to set it right. Um, is info? I'm not sure what that was. Um, anyways, so yeah, someone mentioned my resources page there. Feel free to go there um, and you can see what's available. Um, there, the, it's the first four links under supplements at eatbeautiful.net forward slash resources. So I hope this has been helpful. Do, are there any more questions you want to type in before we get off for the day? Um, and then I would just say, you know, probably most of the people who are watching or listening would benefit from at least doing ACV, lemon juice, um, or digestive bitters. And then any health issues at all, very much consider HCL with pepsin. And like I said, I love that Doctor's Best brand. It's HCL with pepsin and bitters, and it's a really low price actually. So you don't, the only downside of that supplement is you don't get to taste the bitters. You're welcome. Someone says, thanks so much. You're welcome. Um, which I really think tasting the bitters is part of it because it helps to, in the salivary glands to produce saliva and it, it helps the whole process. Um, can pregnant women do ACV? Most likely, yes. Um, again, check with your doctor. I don't know for you specifically, but in most cases, apple cider vinegar should be safe for pregnancy. Um, okay, that's all for now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your questions. And I hope this has been helpful. And I will see you again next week at 1030 Pacific Standard Time. Uh, my, my Periscope handle is at Meg Eat Beautiful. And the replay of this will be on my YouTube channel, Megan Stevens. Okay, happy Wednesday, happy week. Thanks, everyone.